start with a statement from Coach about this week's games at Florida and against Mississippi State, then open up questions. Coach, whenever you're ready. Well, we're right in the thick of things with uh, SEC play, 10 games so far, so uh, six remaining. Um, and so two very vital and important games coming up. I feel like I say that every week. <laughs> so I don't know that there's one game in the SEC that's not important. If you look at the standings, we're all kind of jumbled up uh, with each other except for South Carolina. So. Um, I think, like I told you before, I think it will come down to the wire. Uh, with Florida first on the road, honestly, for me, like I'm excited to get on the road and kind of just there's less distractions when we're on the road, um, especially with Valentine's Day. I don't have to worry about my girls having to go to a dinner or anything like that. And the, the dinner will be with the team. And so, um, and film, that'll be our dinner. That'll be our Valentine's Day. Uh, dinner and film and study hall. So, and I'll know where they are. So <laughs> that's always uh, an advantage um, when you have uh, holidays or dates like this coming up and you're on the road. But, um, and then and then obviously home versus Mississippi State on Sunday um, when we will be inviting alumni back and also it will be our Play for K game uh, where we will honor people that uh, have fought and beat uh, breast cancer and then the ones that we love paying homage to those. So it should be a, a full week, an exciting week, and an opportunity for us to kind of get back ro back rolling. Uh, felt like uh, that week after the state game off was, was good. It came at the mm -hmm. right time. Did this week, once again, kind of fall at the right time with, with mm -hmm. how things ended up last week? Yeah, you know, when I really think about, you know, last week, first of all, you know, I, I just watched UConn lose by 20 to South Carolina, and no Cardoza was there. And we had Cardoza. And uh, and that's how good they are. You know, so sometimes it brings perspective because you're like, oh, man, we're right there, and then we let it go. First of all, no one's beat them. But, you know, a team like UConn um, couldn't even take them down. And so – and and they were down. Uh, South Carolina was down with their players. So – it brings perspective that, you know, it's one, it's very tough to, to win there. And then uh, the second thing is, like, they're just a really good team. And then you come and you, you play against a Texas A&M team that's trying to get into the tournament as well. And we get – I lose a player going into halftime, and it just really shook my group up. And so if anything I've learned is, like, it's very important for, for – We've already had injuries and, and people lost. You know, Maria is back but is dealing with a foot injury, and um, and she was gone. And then you have, you know, someone uh, – we lose KK and then Kennedy Todd Williams. That's, that's kind of difficult for us to overcome. Still wasn't excited about the way we responded. Uh, but at the end of the day, I do understand what the situation was. So what this week did – was allow us to reset, uh, get back to, to uh, some things that we want to be defined as or I want the team to be defined as, and that's defense, you know. Guys, we, we played Tennessee. I, I really think that was fool's goal. Like, I, you know, we won that game 80-75, to 75, and it was great for the fans and whatnot, but that's just not how we play. You know, if you look at our scores – that, that was not a normal type game for us. And then we come out and we play Florida really close. I mean, uh, I have an excellent defensive half. And then all of a sudden, we, we almost let them score 40 points in the second half. It's the inconsistency of being a defensive team that my, myself and my staffs, that's been our focus. You were pretty openly disappointed after the a and game. Yeah. And I think it was Maddie who said, you know, there was at least one day where there were no basketballs just running defense without the ball. How, how, how have you seen them respond to that? Well, here's the thing. My team, my team knows that they need to be a defensive team, but they love scoring. <laughs> and it's fun. And the way we defend, it's very difficult. 
It's, it's, it's truly a character building process because you have to push when you don't have to, when you don't want to push. You have to grind it out when you're tired. You have to look out for the people on the floor with you. It's a defensive system. And so easily you can opt to not do it, <laughs> you know, because it's hard. Right. And so, um, it's not that they don't know how to do it. This time has allowed me to remind them of what it takes, what it feels like, and what we're going to need to be able to uh, put ourselves in a situation to go to the NCAA tournament for a third year in a row. How does preparing for kind of these second games that you're getting against opponents, mm -hmm. how does your preparation process change when you've already seen a team before? Well, it helps. Uh, because, like, the first time we played them, I think we spent an hour just going over player personnel. Uh, my players know who we who they are. Now, Mataru did not play, but we were prepared. We didn't know she wasn't going to play. So uh, they are well aware of, you know, Florida and what they're trying to do, and they're red hot right now. They're playing well. Um, they're different from us. They want to score a lot of points. <laughs> so... Uh, it's two different games, and I think on Thursday the team that uh, stays true to their identity the most will win, you know, and um, and it's going to be very difficult. Um, they they just beat Mississippi State, and, you know, so – and now we got to go into their place. But it was difficult when we opened up against Alabama. It was difficult at Georgia. It has been difficult at Vanderbilt. So if we want to be an NCAA tournament team, uh, we got to win games at home and on the road. Kind of looking ahead to, to state mm -hmm. on the weekend, um, in-state player, uh, the bridge of power. I'm just curious what you've seen from her growth this season. Um, you know, I've always been fond of the bridge. You know, first of all, she comes from a, uh, a winning high school program. Uh, we recruited her, so... Um, I was familiar uh, with what she did, and I just think that she, um, I think Debrisha works really hard uh, f from what I've heard and what I've seen, and she's just been, like, really consistent of working on her craft and is playing with a level of confidence uh, this season. You've got, obviously, Snuda mm -hmm. and, you know, other examples of, you know, Mississippi, you know, recruits kind of prospering. How important is that for the game in this state to have that proof of concept? I think it's great. You know, we would have loved to kept one more, but she left. <laughs> uh, you know, I think the trend is becoming that elite players from their states are staying home. What makes it difficult in Mississippi is you have two Power Five programs in the same conference. So it's not even like I could be like, oh, they're in the Big 12, you want to play in the SEC. And so that makes it incredibly challenging because when you do get one that has a lot of talent, now you're fighting in state against them, you know, whereas, you know, the LSUs and South Carolina is not so much. And so, um, and not only in state, like right up the street. <laughs> so, um, but but I think you can't be what you can't see, and hopefully both Snutter and uh, Debrisha uh, provide an example that it is possible, and um, and it challenges even the grassroots level coaches to continue to produce, and high school coaches to continue to produce players that could stay at home. You know, the Hubbard guy at Mississippi State on the men's team, he was committed here. That's why I could speak about him because I – I helped recruit him here, <laughs> and so, and now he's there, and I know his family. You know, he DM'd me after the game, like, "I hate I didn't get to see you." You know, <clears throat> it's important if you if you get a high level talent to try to keep him at home. I, I have to ask, when the players come in and there's no basketballs, what's what's the reaction? I imagine they they know it's about to happen. <laughs> well, Maddie and Snuda and. These girls been around me long enough to know to know that um, when I'm very upset, um, after my presser, I had five text messages um, <laughs> from them on my phone. So they they knew they know the standard, and 
and they know that they have to uphold it. And um, uh, so I think that they understood that it was going to be a rough couple of days, <laughs> especially because we didn't have to worry about anybody but ourselves. But it's not like I went any longer or anything. It's truly getting us back and getting my team to understand that, you know, Ole Miss women's basketball went to the Sweet 16 holding the number one team to 49 points. And do we expect to hold people to 49 points? That's very tough to do, but that is who we are. We clinched fourth place last year on a block, <laughs> you know. Um, when it was time for us to beat Auburn, we had a huge stop here. Uh, Tennessee, huge stop when it mattered. We defend. And, uh, and so – I'm trying to figure out how to get that in my players' veins <laughs> because usually when we defend, our offense is easier. And so, but human nature is, is wild. And here's the thing, Cats, like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. I hate that we lost, but if we were going to lose, it needed to happen then, and hopefully we could try to fix some of these things now because – for a while, my team was kind of on a high after the Tennessee win, and we went through that, like, mini identity crisis. I'm not saying we're going to go down to Florida and win. I'm not guaranteeing that. But I do know that they understand how important it is for us to stay true to our identity. Any other questions? Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.